16 Celebrities Who Were Banned From Late Night Shows Number 16 Director Harmony Corrine, who is perhaps best known for his film Spring Breakers, was better known to David Letterman as a purse rifler. In the mid to late 90s, Corrine made several odd appearances on The Late Show but one appearance never came to fruition because Letterman banned him. Letterman finally explained the ban in 2013 when Corrine's friend, James Franco, came on the show. I went upstairs to greet Meryl Streep and welcome her to the show, and I knock on the door, and she was not in there. And I looked around, and I found Harmony going through her purse. True story. And so I said, that's it, put her things back in her bag and then get out. Number 15. Comedian Bobcat Goldthwaite made a late-night appearance that literally went down in flames. In 1994, Goldthwaite was a guest on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno when he decided to set his chair on fire. It may have seemed spontaneous, but Goldthwaite came prepared with lighter fluid and a lighter hidden up his sleeve. Leno and another guest, Lauren Hutton, quickly doused the flames with cups of water, and Goldthwaite said the host was, not unreasonably, upset with him. His ban from the show wasn't the only repercussion, he was also charged with arson. According to NBC, he is the first Tonight Show guest to be charged with a crime. Goldthwaite had to pay a $3,880 fine, part of which went to NBC to replace the burnt chair. Number 14 Dax Shepard has been open about his past drug and alcohol use, including a disastrous appearance on Late Night with Conan O'Brien in 2004. As he related on Blake Griffin's podcast, The Pursuit of Healthiness. I had done the pre-interview in a blackout and I woke up to the hotel security shaking me awake, and I was with a stranger. This was 20 minutes before the interview. As Shepard didn't remember the pre-interview, he also didn't know the talking points and stories he was supposed to cover. I show up on the show, I don't know what he's talking about. I can tell he's queuing me up for stories I've told but I don't know any of the stories. Shepard said he also broke a coffee table and was banned until he got sober. When he later brought up the incident and the coffee table on O'Brien's TBS show, Conan, all was forgiven. As O'Brien said, two-thirds of our guests are wasted, so I wouldn't worry about that. Number 13 In 2001, actor Gary Busey appeared on The Howard Stern Show, where he ignored the notion of personal space. Busey picked up Stern's co-host, Robin Quivers, in a bear hug, and tried to wrestle Howard Stern to the ground, chasing him around the studio. Busey reportedly blamed the incident on an alter ego, saying, I have 13 separate personality parts that I know of. That personality you saw on Howard Stern that day is, pesky, the excitable boy. For years, Busey wasn't invited back to the show, but he did do a radio-only interview with Stern in 2017. Number 12. One of the most bitter and complex talk show feuds of all time occurred between two of late-night television's most famous hosts, Jay Leno and Conan O'Brien. The drama went down in 2010. Leno had been the host of The Tonight Show on NBC since 1992. In the mid-2000s, O'Brien, the host of NBC's Late Night, started getting tempting offers from other networks. Wanting to keep O'Brien, NBC promised him the hosting job on The Tonight Show when Leno's contract was up in 2009. Leno didn't take kindly to the news that he was eventually getting the boot. So once 2009 rolled around, to keep Leno from going to another network, NBC started The Jay Leno Show, a primetime program that aired before The Tonight Show. When neither Leno nor O'Brien earned good ratings, the network went a step further and put The Jay Leno Show in O'Brien's slot, bumping The Tonight Show back a half hour from its usual time. O'Brien ended up taking a payout, and The Tonight Show eventually fell back into Leno's hands. While NBC took a lot of heat for the debacle, Leno also received a lot of backlash for refusing to go gracefully when he'd previously stated he would, and for painting himself as a hapless pawn of NBC. 
Speaking to Playboy in 2010, O'Brien said he'd moved on from the incident, refusing to let it embitter him. But when asked whether he'd ever invite Leno to be a guest on his TBS show, O'Brien responded, No, there are certain things I will not do, regardless of the price. Number 11. In an interview with Stephen Colbert in 2012, Jon Stewart was asked to name his least favorite guest on The Daily Show. His answer was actor Hugh Grant. And we've had dictators on this show, Stewart said. According to Stewart, Grant spent his time complaining to production staff and claiming he had better places to be. When Stewart showed a promotional clip, provided to him by Grant's publicist, of his film Did You Hear About the Morgans, Grant complained about the clip selected. Stewart said he would never have the actor back on the show. Number 10. For decades, Howard Stern and Jay Leno have shared an intense mutual dislike, which appears to stem from Stern's chaotic appearance on The Tonight Show in 1995. Stern walked onto the stage with two bikini-clad women and prompted the women to kiss each other. Throughout the segment, Stern continued to blur the line between guest and host, often talking over Leno and his other guests, Gene Siskel and Robert Ebert. Leno was reportedly so furious that he nearly walked off the set and yelled at Stern's producer. Leno later called into Stern's show to say the radio host had gone beyond the acceptable standards. Number 9. Kathy Griffin is known for her controversial antics, such as stripping on live television and posting a fake photo of a beheaded President Donald Trump. So it's no surprise that she's on the banned list of many shows that air at all times of the day. To name a few, she has been banned from The Late Show for swearing too much, from Today for making fun of the hosts, and from The View for a telling an inappropriate joke about Howard Stern and Barbara Walters. She was also not welcome on The Ellen DeGeneres Show after she claimed DeGeneres had a mean streak and didn't support women. Which we now know is apparently true. Number 8. In 2016, late-night host Seth Meyers banned Donald Trump from the show. It was a retaliatory move in response to Trump's own ban. He revoked press credentials from the Washington Post after the news organization printed a headline he didn't like. Myers of course knew he'd banned a person he was unlikely to invite on the show anyway. Number 7. Oprah Winfrey and David Letterman had a quasi-feud for 16 years that was strange because neither seemed to know if or why they were feuding. After appearing on Late Night with David Letterman in 1989, Winfrey instituted a self-imposed ban, refusing to go on the show despite Letterman publicly prodding her. In 2005, Winfrey finally came on to address the issue, but the feud was still shrouded in mystery. Winfrey asked Letterman, could you tell me please what has transpired? I have never for a moment had a feud with you. Still, things didn't seem resolved. In 2010, Letterman speculated to Jon Stewart about what he considered the origins of the animosity. While many assumed it had something to do with Letterman's Uma, Oprah, joke at the 1995 Oscars, Letterman told Stewart that Winfrey hated him because he once made her pay for his lunch. Apparently, Letterman spotted Winfrey having lunch at the same place as him on vacation and told his server that Winfrey would be picking up the tab. The saga seemed to reach some closure in 2013, when Letterman appeared on Oprah's next chapter. Winfrey described that what prompted her self-banning was actually her first appearance on Late Night. Oprah said, It was a terrible experience for me. The guy in the audience started yelling, Get her! You were sort of baiting the audience, and there were a bunch of drunk guys down the front. I was trying to like, you know, mitigate the whole thing, and it felt so uncomfortable to me. I didn't want to have that experience again. Number 6. Vivica A. Fox and Jimmy Kimmel weren't big fans of each other when she appeared on Jimmy Kimmel Live, in 2005. Things got off to a rocky start from the introductions. While listing Fox's resume credits, Kimmel finished with, and most harrowing of all, Star Jones's Bridesmaid. Fox, who was appearing to promote her new Lifetime movie Missing, told Kimmel she didn't find his jokes about her friend amusing. K. 
Kimmel retorted, it goes both ways. I'm desperate to make this work. Kimmel continued to mention Jones, and Fox walked off, leaving Kimmel to finish the segment with an empty chair. Years later, Kimmel named Fox as the one guest he would never have back. Number 5. Piers Morgan has made his feelings about Madonna clear on a number of occasions, repeatedly trashing her in a bizarre, one-sided feud. Morgan said she wasn't welcome on his CNN show, Piers Morgan Tonight, because she was boring and annoying. When asked to explain further, Morgan revealed. Madonna and I, we've never really seen eye to eye. There was a bread roll throwing incident in London in the mid 90s, there was an incident at a hotel in the south of France, at the Cannes Film Festival involving a photographer and a bodyguard, there's been an incident involving a pub owned by her recently departed husband, Guy Ritchie, where my brother was the manager. Despite the lack of response from Madonna on her alleged ban, Morgan also called her too vegan for TV and said there was no reason to talk to her when you could talk to Lady Gaga instead. When Madonna promoted her new album on Twitter, Morgan tweeted at the star to again inform her she was banned. Madonna's manager responded with another tweet, a picture of a recent email from Morgan's team to Madonna's requesting that she come on his show. Morgan hurriedly explained that the email was about his UK show, while the ban was for his US show. Then she was banned from both. Number 4. Comedian Bill Hicks made 11 appearances on Late Night with David Letterman between 1984 and 1993. But his 12th performance, on Letterman's Late Show, moved to CBS, was deemed too controversial to even air. In a New Yorker profile shortly after the taping, Hicks spoke about the banning incident, discussing what he considered the end of true comedy in America. As a comedian, Hicks believed it was his job to be thought-provoking in a way the U.S. media wouldn't allow. According to Hicks, the audience and Letterman enjoyed his routine. It wasn't until later that he was notified by the show's executive producer that CBS found his material too controversial and they'd be replacing him on the episode with another comedian. Later, CBS blamed the decision on Letterman and the show's producers. What Hicks didn't tell anyone at the time was that he'd been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. He passed in 1994. In 2009, Letterman invited Hicks's mother, Mary, onto The Late Show and finally aired the infamous unseen set. In it, Hicks makes jokes about several subjects that were taboo for network television at the time, such as pro-lifers, the Easter Bunny, Billy Ray Cyrus, and crucifixes. Number 3. Comedian Jackie Mason gained important exposure from his appearances on The Ed Sullivan Show. But in 1964, one appearance almost derailed his entire career. While performing his set on The Variety Show, Mason looked off camera and saw Sullivan gesturing with two fingers to signify he had two minutes remaining. The show was being cut shorter than planned due to an airing of a speech by President Lyndon Johnson. Mason began riffing and made a gesture towards Sullivan, pointing at him with his thumb and index finger. From Sullivan's vantage point, however, it appeared Mason was flipping Sullivan the bird. Irate, Sullivan banned Mason from the show and terminated the contract he had for six more episodes. The incident made it difficult for Mason to book any television gigs, and he eventually sued Sullivan for defamation, though the case was dismissed. Two years later, however, Sullivan realized his error and lifted the ban. Mason appeared on the show again and Sullivan issued a public apology. Number 2 When Kelsey Grammer went on Piers Morgan Tonight in 2012, he had one request, don't show any pictures of his ex-wife, Camille Grammer Meyer. The actor was willing to answer questions about his third wife, with whom he'd had an acrimonious divorce, but when her picture was shown in the opening credits, Grammer walked off the set moments before the interview. Morgan tweeted. So, Kelsey Grammer saw a photo of his ex-wife Camille in the open of our show and legged it. Extraordinary. Never had this happen before. 
I like Kelsey Grammer personally, but this was a shockingly unprofessional thing to do. I wasn't even going to mention his ex-wife. The actor's publicist, Stan Rosenfield, told The Hollywood Reporter, Pierce needs to take responsibility for what he did to Kelsey. It's called accountability. Morgan went a step further and announced that Grammer was barred from his show. But Grammer didn't seem keen to return. Rosenfield responded, We have already issued a statement and are not going to engage in this interchange. Number 1. Johnny Carson became the host of The Tonight Show in 1962, around the same time comedian Joan Rivers was struggling to get her big career break as a woman in a male-dominated comedy scene. The Tonight Show became a launching pad for comics, including Rivers, who found overnight success after appearing on the show, and was also hired as a writer. Rivers and Carson became a dynamic on-screen duo, with Rivers making almost 100 appearances on The Tonight Show over the next two decades and serving as the guest host when Carson was away. Rivers credited Carson with giving her a huge career bump, and said she rejected competing offers out of loyalty to her mentor. In the mid-80s, however, things soured between Rivers and NBC. She'd never been offered a long-term contract, and when talk of Carson's retirement started, a list of potential replacements was leaked. Rivers wasn't on it. So when she was approached by Fox about starting a new late-night show with her as the host, she took the deal. Rivers initially wanted to keep the show a secret from Carson until everything was finalized because he had a reputation for being temperamental. When the news leaked, Rivers claimed she repeatedly tried to call Carson, but he hung up on her. Carson claimed she never called. Not only was Rivers banned from The Tonight Show, but it was nearly impossible to get anyone to appear on her own show as they too would be banned from Carson's. Rivers later wrote her take on Carson's anger. I think he really felt because I was a woman that I just was his. That I wouldn't leave him. I know this sounds very warped. But I don't understand otherwise what was going on. For years, I thought that maybe he liked me better than the others. But I think it was a question of, I found you, and you're my property. He didn't like that, as a woman, I went up against him. Rivers and Carson never spoke again before Carson passed in 2005. Jay Leno upheld Rivers' ban out of respect to Carson, but she did appear on the show again during Jimmy Fallon's first night as host. She passed six months later.